John with the crest of a commissioner of the Exchequer. Yes, I think we'll follow. There may be trouble when they cross the Torbridge Manor. The old Thane and his yeoman have no love for Prince John's commissioners. It's young Edmund I was thinking of. If our commissioner meets young Edmund, someone might get hurt. Yes, but it won't be the commissioner. Young Edmund of Torbridge sometimes shows more spirit than is good for him. Come on. Hello, Edmund. Hello, Bess. Do you know who's approaching your tavern? No, but whoever it is is welcome. The Commissioner of Taxes and his escort. And what's so strange about that these days? He's always milking the countryside for taxes for Prince John's Yeah, but he's not staying here. We don't want his sort on Torbridge land. Now, listen here, Edmund, Squire of Torbridge. I'm a free man. Neither you nor the thing your father's going to tell me who's stopping in my tavern. Bear that in mind. Quiet, father. And you, Edmund. You're home from the Crusades now, so stop your fighting. Not till King Richard's on the throne again. You know, you haven't even tried to steal a kiss since you came home. How do you think that makes a poor girl feel? Not a chance to refuse a kiss to her soldier lad? Bess, there's a time for kissing. And there's a time for more serious matters. But when Torbridge opens its gates to Prince John's followers... Hush now. Would you treat kissing as a light affair, Edmund? Innkeeper, I'm Lord Germain, Commissioner of the Exchequer. I want lodgings for myself, my men and my horses. At once, my lord. Come now. There's much I want to hear of your adventure abroad. Are the maids in France prettier than us? Did you see... Our maid, I want a cold partridge pie served in my chambers. My father will bring it up to you right away, my lord. But I want you to serve it. Do you sing, lass? I have a mind to be entertained. If it's ballads you want, you must come to me. Squire Edmund of Torbridge, of the King's personal guard. The King likes a good ballad. And those about him are apt to acquire the art of making a song to fit the occasion. I'll have none of your vulgar ditties. I think even your Lordship will be impressed by this one. Shall I tell you the shame of Lord Judas Germain? Who betrayed his king for the sake of gain, and sold his soul to the devil, and on joined the ranks of Black Prince John. I've been warned to expect treason in these parts, Edmund of Trowbridge. I've heard your name. Edmund, the dagger! <laughs> Self-defense. Aye, we all saw that, Edmund. But Prince John will call it murder. He'll call it treason. We must get him away from here. He can't be found in my tavern. Best go to the stable, fetch Lord Germain's horse. We must strap him in the saddle and send him on his way. Wait. Girth, delay the guard. What? Come on, quick. Lord Germain. Uh, oh, oh, um, Lord Germain's last words, in a manner of speaking, were these. Uh, uh, enjoy yourself, make yourself cozy, and have a mug of cider. He had a rendezvous with a lady in black, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the end of my Lord Germain. And I, for one, can't say I'm sorry. Oh, you've done no wrong, Edmund. But I'm afraid it'll be a sorry day for Torbridge when Prince John hears of this. Your Highness, the Lord.
Old Sheriff of Blackheath wishes to see you. Send him here. Ah. There you are, Blackheath. Is this how you maintain the King's peace within your shire? A commissioner murdered. Most tragic. Tragic? It is no longer safe for us to travel the roads. In Yorkshire, my wardens ambushed. In Lincoln, outlaws waylay my chancellor. And now a commissioner murdered. The body was found at Torbridge, a seat of unrest for some time. The murder of my commissioner is treason. He must be found, Blackheath, even if you have to raise Torbridge to do it. We need not take that risk, sire. Under the law, if this murderer is not found, the people of Torbridge must pay murder. Yes. Yes, the murder fine. And such a fine would be a large one. Larger than the people of Torbridge could ever afford to pay, sire. Excellent, Blackheath, excellent. The inquest will be on the morrow. <laughs> Will the woodcutter Brahm stand forward and take the oath? Edmund, you're a fool. I wouldn't miss my own trial. I was carting wood for the manor house. We always lay in for the winter at this season of the year. It was short after sunrise. I know, for the long shadows hit the body till I was nigh on it. And the dew was still on the handle of the dagger that stuck out of him. You're accustomed to track the woods, aren't you, Brahm? Did you examine the ground for footprints or the tracks of a horse? Didn't notice a thing. Then I don't suppose you noticed that your mule had tramped down all the footprints that might have helped us find the murderer? The mules at Torbridge are like that. They're nervous creatures. Most times you can't do a thing with them. That's enough. Oh. Oh. Surgeon Abel, stand forward. Surgeon Abel. You examined the wound which caused the death of Lord Germain, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes, no doubt at all. The dagger pierced the chest, the seat of the blood. Instant death was the result. So the murder was committed with a dagger. As to whether it was uh, murder or death by misadventure, that is outside a surgeon's knowledge. Whether it is murder or not will be decided by this inquest. Stand down. I call Lord Germain's captain of guard. No man could have inflicted such a wound upon himself without help. Shh. I want to hear this evidence. I heard Lord Germain shouting. When I got there, he'd left word to wait. And he'd ridden off to meet a, to meet a dark-eyed lass, is what he said, sir. Have you any clue as to the identity of this girl? Well, uh, his lordship's eye was took with the tavern girl, Bess. Constable, order a search for this tavern girl, Bess. Bring her to me for questioning. Yes, slip out of here as quietly as you can. Go to the manor house and stay there. There's just one thing to add, my lord. Lord Germain warned us Torbridge Manor was enemy country. They'd as soon murder a Prince John Manor's look at him. Thank you, Captain. That'll be all. You can step down. In the name of our sovereign, Prince John, I hereby call anyone who has knowledge of this foul murder to stand forward and give evidence. I hear no witness. Very well. I ordain, according to law, that the people of Torbridge will pay Murdrum a fine of 100 bars of pure, refined gold to be paid unless the murderer is found. To be paid in full before the phase of the moon has turned. My Lord Sheriff, I am Gerald, Thane of Torbridge. A fine of 100 bars of gold is unheard of. A prince's commissioner has been murdered. That too is unheard of. Where could the yeomen of Torbridge ever find such a sum? You can, of course, offer yourselves and your, your lands to the loyal service of Prince John. Never! Then you have no alternative but to produce the murderer, have you? My Lord Sheriff, we found the tavern girl best trying to escape from the castle. Excellent. Hold over questioning. The inquest is over. Bill Hall. I cannot impose my will upon this meeting. The decision must come freely from all of you. If it were left to me alone to decide between surrendering my land to Prince John or my son, I have only one choice. This is more than passing sentiment, Father. 
Do you want to crawl on your knees to the Lord Sheriff of Blackheath and swear away your lives to the bondage of Prince John and whoever he may assign to be your master? I was born into serfdom. I won my freedom once, I can win it again. But personal freedom is not enough. Tallbridge is known throughout the realm for its loyalty to King Richard and its contempt to Prince John. Now, if Tallbridge falls... You're going oh, beyond the issue, my son. No one manner, no one man can make the success or failure of King Richard's cause. Lord Germain was killed by accident. I have nothing to reproach myself for. If I must hang for it, I will. Bit of the rope round one man's neck than the iron collar of serfdom round the whole of Torbridge. I say he's right. Why should innocent people suffer because of his recklessness? We all know Squire Edmund's quick tongue and headstrong temper. How many times have we warned him it would only lead to trouble? It was your own daughter he was helping. Helping? And where is best now with his help? In the hands of my old sheriff of Blackheath, that's where she is. Well, so you gave yourself up. I take my oath without shame or regret. I killed Lord Germain in self-defense, protecting the girl he insulted. And I welcome this opportunity of telling the country he was a craven and a coward who blackened the name of chivalry. You'll have ample opportunity to talk. From the gallows before you're hanged. They have prepared the ritual, Lordship. The man of Torbridge is herewith and forthwith relieved of the murder fine imposed. We leave for the hunting lodge before sundown. Take him away. Go! Take this to Thane, Gerald. With my compliments. Do you have anything to say, Sir Ivanhoe, before this meeting makes its choice? Only this. Torbridge Manor has fanned a spark of resistance to tyranny which has caught fire all across the realm. Oh, I know what it means for proud men to kneel before Prince John, but take courage. John's days are numbered, and before long King Richard will rule, and we'll all be free men again. And when that day comes, do you want the blood of an innocent man on your conscience? If there be any among you who would surrender Squire Edmund to Prince John, let him rise in his place and make his will known. Where is Edmund? He slipped out while you were talking. I think he's going to give himself up. But we can't allow Prince John to hang Edward of Torbridge. It would break all resistance. But the place is surrounded by patrols. Surely he'll be arrested before he's able to give himself up. No. Oh. But we may be able to save his neck. Prince John would have such an important prisoner taken for trial in London, so that he may set an example by hanging him at the tower. Yeah, but such a journey would take more than a day. Right. So my Lord Sheriff of Blackheath will stop for the night at Prince John's hunting lodge. But that's a fortress! Now wait, until Blackheath arrives with his troops, there's only a skeleton force to guard the lodge. And we will be there before Blackheath. I'll raise every yeoman in the manor. Take him away. Place Squire Edmund in a cell for the night, with a double guard. Yes, sir. Steward! Coming, my lord. Ho, for myself and my officers. They're coming. Don't move to my quarter, girl. Well, here's your prisoner. All right. Bring him this way. Oh, so, this is the felon who gave Lord Germain his just desserts. Who are you, girl? Yeah. Why, do you think I want to be hanged for abetting treason? But I don't want to be saved. I don't want Torbridge or anyone else to pay for my mistakes. All right, if you want to be hanged, it's your own neck. But Torbridge is safe now. They've discharged their responsibility by delivering the murderer. Do you want Prince John, Blackheath, and all his pack down on you, or are you coming? Come, my boy. Come on. Come on. there too. Seems the Lord Sheriff has guards posted at every church in the Shire. Uh, I wouldn't like to ask protection of the church. Well, we can't take you to the manor, they'll be searching there. What about the tavern? Don't be a fool, Edmund. 
You're endangering anyone you meet. Look, just let me make a run for it. If I can get over the border to Scotland or Wales. No, there's a better way than that. Listen, I've got an idea. You go to the Druid ruins and wait there till sundown. I'll go back, see how the land lies. Then, when it's night, with a good horse, we stand a chance of getting you to the coast, possibly out of the country. Good luck. The Lord Sheriff of Blackheath, sir. Well, Blackheath, where is your prisoner? Your Highness knows he escaped from the hunting lodge. Yes, a fortress armed with a company of your best men. Oh, I wish I could curse you for a stupid, incompetent, blundering fool. But you're not. You're a strong, ruthless administrator. That's why I'm frightened. You're not equal to the forces against you. I promise you, sire, this man will be taken. Alive or dead. You promised before. But I have outposts all along the border, sire. I know for certain that this man has not left the Shah. With your permission, sire, I will summon the hue and cry. Do you have it? I will force every able-bodied freedman to join the search and hunt down this treasonable felon. I warn you, Blackheath, I need this hanging desperately as an example. If you do not catch this murderer, I may have to hang you in his place. Now get out. So there I was, a poor old beggar squatting by the gates of the hunting lodge, murmuring arms. Oh, 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 and with as good a view of what went on as if it were a play for my benefit. <laughs> yeah, well, get on, man. Get I on. I am getting on. Then the sheriff came out. Yeah, and he called on every able-bodied man in the shire to join the posse com... Comitatus. Uh, that's right. Uh, and to uh, raise a hue and cry for the treasonable felon, Edmund of Torbridge. Oh, I've never seen such a company. To hunt poor Edmund as if he were a criminal. And if he's raised a hue and cry, that forces all of us to join the hunt. And so we shall. To hunt down any human being, however evil, is bad enough. But a friend, a neighbor, my Edmund, your son, will you let them do this? My lass is right. It's a monstrous thing and an unnatural law to turn men into hounds to hunt down a man. Oh, of course it's an evil law. But this time we shall use the hue and cry for Edmund's sake. How are we helping Edmund if we join the pack? Well, you heard what Garth told us. Blackheath's posse is already beating the woods. Well, we shall form a posse of our own. Why, Torbridge, the, the weavers of Quincy, yeoman of Highvale, to reach Edmund before Blackheath does. Oh, we raise a posse to help Edmund. All legal. In the name of Prince John and Lord Blast him, Sheriff himself. Can we reach Edmund in time? Well, we know where Edmund is. Blackheath doesn't. Gerald, you rouse the manor. Garth, you ride to Highvale and to Quincy and to every village where yeomen stand with Richard. I'll ride ahead to the ruins and warn Edmund. Come on. Raise the hue and cry in the name of Prince John! And the... and who are you to raise the hue and cry in the name of Prince John? I'm good, Squire to Sir Ivanhoe. Look, the, the Sheriff Posse's already on its way to seize young Edmund of Torbridge. Ah! But Sir Ivanhoe's got a plan to save him. Why didn't you say that at once in, instead of using Prince John's name? Oh, why don't you use your brains? I have to say that to make it legal. Come on, boys. Find anybody who can carry weapons and join Sir Ivanhoe's posse. That's right. Come on, let's go. You can't fool me with that signal. Evan, you fool, it's Ivanhoe. Drop that bow. That's a lie. Ivanhoe won't be back till after sundown. Edmund! Come back, you fool! Where is Edmund? Well, he ran when he heard me. He's heading straight for the Lord Sheriff's posse. There's only one place with good cover, the Shepherd's House on the rise. That is, if he means to stand and fight. Well, how far is that? About a quarter of a mile. Here we are, sir. Go the lads. Just a minute. Hear that? Back his posse. They're using hunting horns to keep in contact. That'll be very useful, sir. Yes. I'd better head straight after Edmund. Gerald, you and the men of Torbridge circle around to the north. Girth, you and the villagers circle around to the south. When the circle meets, we'll have Blackheath and his posse, Edmund and myself, trapped right in the middle. You know what to do then. Right, come on. Come on, boys!
Yes, this closes our circle. Well, now they're completely surrounded. Shh! Let's Edmund is surrounded. It is now only a matter of time. Our men are closing in. I wouldn't like to be young Squire Edmund now. So you've been busy too. <laughs> yes, sir. And the rest of Blackie's men have surrounded themselves. <laughs> they followed the sound of our horns. <laughs> Ivanhoe! I don't understand. Well, there's no time to explain now. We must try and make the coast before nightfall. Oh, Gareth, uh, clean up. What? Nothing <laughs> to cry about this. There's plenty of work for a good, richard man in France. Soon. King Richard will be home again. The land will be rid of Prince John forever. So come on. Give me a smile. I can't. Please, Beth. Just one. Oh, Edmund. The boat's waiting. Thank <laughs> you. 